Hi, I'm Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to graph the following polynomial function of negative 3x multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 4. So it turns out we can kind of follow three general steps. All right, the first thing is going to be to determine the end behavior of the function. Right, If you want to start, the best place to start is sometimes at the end. All right, Actually, that's kind of true in life, more or less. Right, Figure out where you want to get to in the end, and then you figure out your way how to get there. All right. Now, um, when we look at this particular function, uh, we can determine the end behavior um, by looking at the summation of all of the powers of all of the factors that we have. Now, what does that mean? So I'm going to put this actually in parentheses because that's technically another factor. OK, um, now the exponent there is going to be a one. The exponent here is a one and the exponent there is one. Now, when I sum these powers on up, when this is in fully factored form, that number of three tells me something. I'm really con I'm really focused on the value of it being odd, okay? Whether it's even or odd. The fact that it's odd will tell me something. It actually tells me then that, you know, at some point that this thing will, if I were to do all the math out here, if I were to FOIL and do all this stuff, that I'm going to have an x cubed value somewhere. That would be the highest power of my variable. So this is actually a cubic function, okay? Um, and I'm concerned about the value because the odd nature of that tells me something unique about the end behavior. The next thing I would want to do is not only determine whether it's even or odd, or what the heck is the sign of the leading coefficient, they call it, the coefficient that precedes my x cubed value. Now, if you had it in an x cubed, you know, form where you had plus like 2x squared, you know, whatever the heck this would be, it's very easy. You know, you're just looking at this term. You're looking and seeing what that coefficient is. Maybe it's negative 2. Maybe it's just negative x. Maybe, you know, maybe it's positive 9, whatever. But it's the sign that's important there. That's the leading coefficient, okay? When you have it in now factored form, you're just looking at the beginning. If there's a negative sign, guess what? It's going to be a negative leading coefficient. If it's a positive sign or it's not there, then it's going to be positive, okay? But in this particular problem, I have a negative now uh, leading coefficient. So I have to write negative, okay? And with these two things now, I can kind of start determining the end behavior. I can create a table, by the way, for this to help us out, but I think it's useful if you kind of remember some of these little uh, tricks. So what I want to do is I want to find my odd degrees, and I know I have a negative leading coefficient. So that means my end behavior is going to look like this, where the graph is going to trail on and on and on forever that way and on and on and on forever in that direction, okay? And what's ever going to happen here in the middle is the interesting part, okay? But at least I know the end behavior. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda sketch that very quickly, create a set of axes over here in the corner, and I'm just going to plot a point on up here and plot a point on down there. And just remind myself that it's gonna go on and on forever that way, on and on forever that way. So that's the first part. The second part is then going to be to identify the x-intercepts, okay? In this video, I'm just gonna kinda speed through that. Um, if you want to know why I'm doing what I'm doing, check out this playlist on our channel. I have like 20 or so, you know, specific examples of solving for the x-intercepts in which I go to excruciating detail on. Um, if you're curious and you want to learn how it works, check those out, all right? If you want just a quick method, then you'll like this. Um, but anyway, the x-intercepts, what we're going to do now is we're going to take each of these factors here and set them equal to zero, all right? So we're going to take 3x set it equal to zero, that's one of them. What happened there? All right, take then our uh, x plus two, set that equal to zero, great. And then take our x minus four and set that equal to zero. Solve all these for x, obviously x here has to be equal to zero, right? X here will be equal to negative two because you would subtract the two on over from both sides, right? And then x has to be equal to the positive four. Now these are the x values of your x intercepts. Okay, so when you go to your graph now, plot a point at x equals 0, plot a point at x is equal to negative 2 and positive 4. Okay, 0, here's maybe negative 2, and here's going to be the positive 4. Okay, roughly. Now, the next thing you need to do about the x-intercepts is, go is going to be to determine now what the local behavior is around each of these values. Now, how do we do that? Well, we do that by identifying the multiplicity of each factor, okay? Multiplicity of each factor. So let's take a look at this first one. Remember the x value I found here, it correlates with the 
x equaling 0 for that x-intercept. I want to look at its power. Okay, It has an odd power. Now, the power of the factor also tells us something interesting. All right? If it's odd, it's going to tell us something interesting about the local behavior. Uh, the local behavior, then, of the function, when your multiplicity of the factor is odd, will be that it crosses the axis. Okay, it's actually going to cross the axis, either that way or maybe it's going to cross it that way. Okay? If you had an even value, it's going to come down and do a little bumperoo. Okay, it's going to do a little bumpski. All right, whether it's up or down, that's going to depend on a couple of factors. But if you notice, all of these now have odd multiplicities, and therefore they're all going to cross. So what I'm going to do is just simply copy this term, and we're going to paste it in a few spots. All right, so there you go. So they're all going to cross. Okay. Now we can really start to really piece this graph together, because. I know that the end behavior here has to go on and on and on forever, right? And somehow I have to connect that to this point. Now you might say, well, Andrew, how do you know it goes straight down here? How do you know it doesn't come out here and then go like this? And then, well, because honestly, this wouldn't be a function anymore, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, okay? So I know that this is a function and that this is coming straight down, basically. So it's going to cross the x-axis there, okay? Now, the only way it's going to come and cross the x-axis at this point is if it makes a u-turn and it crosses there, right? You might say, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I could also have done it this way, right, where it makes a u-turn earlier and then makes another u-turn and crosses there. And I would say, yes, you're right, but guess what? You added another x-intercept now, right? So it can't happen that way because you only have three x-intercepts. So there's only one way that this can happen. It's going to go through there, and guess what? It's going to come down there, and it's going to keep on going on and on and on forever, as we said. So this is now the basic sketch of the function. I don't suggest that it only comes down to here. Maybe it goes on down really far. And I don't suggest it only comes up to here. Maybe it only goes up a little bit, or maybe it goes up a lot of it. But this is the general picture, okay? Now, the last bit of information we can solve for, and this one won't be that important because it's crossing at the origin, basically. But we would want to figure out the y-intercept, okay? Y-intercept. Now, the way to, do, to figure out the y-intercept is you take your function here, rewrite it, Instead of n of x, you can just write y. So y is equal to negative 3 times x, multiplied then by x plus 2, multiplied by x minus 4. So all you're going to do is you're going to start plugging in 0. I can't write a 4. That'd be nice. All right, there we go. So all you're going to do is you're going to start writing in zeros for x. Right? So there's going to be 0 plus 2. There's going to be 0 minus 4. And when you do this math out, it's going to be a 2 in here and a negative 4. So it's a negative 4 multiplied by a positive 2, multiplied by a negative 3, multiplied by 0. Oh, multiplied by 0. The whole thing's going to be 0. And guess what? It's going to cross that origin. And basically, that's what we said it should do by just drawing it. All right? So this is this. I know I'm really, really good here with the rough sketch of the graph. All right? I know it looks kind of pathetic in terms of just the general picture. But... What you can do is you can get a nice little picture by using your calculator. So just go negative 3. Let's see if we're in the ballpark. Negative 3x, open the parenthesis, do x plus 2. Close the parenthesis, open the parenthesis, then do x minus 4. All right, and let's see what we get. Hit zoom and go standard. And yeah, that's not terrible, right? Maybe I'll zoom out just a teeny weeny bit. All right, so I'll go to window and I'm going to I'll go to x min of negative 5. Let's go to 5 on the max, and then let's go to negative, I don't know, 50, and maybe we'll go to 50. Let's see if everything gets put in the screen. Yeah, there you go, right? I'm almost there. So as you can see, this thing has that general shape to it. It comes down from the left, comes back up, and then it turns around and comes back down. But that's exactly the general shape I had here, right? Started up on the left, came down, popped back up, and then came back down, all right? So that's the idea. It gives you... Yeah, it just gives you some shortcuts, right? Just re just remember that whatever, you know, whatever whatever this function is will determine the shape of the graph. Right? All the graph is is just a picture of the x and y values, okay? Of every point that could be plugged in or every x value, you know, every point that can be possibly gotten from this function. If you plug in x is equal to 1, you're going to get a certain y value. If you plug x is equal to 0 0.09872184, you're going to get a certain y value. And all this graph is is just a visual representation of what values are getting spit out of this function. Okay? 
So, you know, if you really wanted to, you know, these are some shortcuts here, but if you had to like plot the graph exactly, well, then you actually have to plug in like exact X values, right? To really get an idea of what's going on. Now, again, that's not really the point of this. It's just to kind of get a basic understanding of the shape and the general nature of these polynomial functions. But, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. What I was going to say was, like and subscribe if you can. All right, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do, um, again, I really do appreciate it. We wouldn't be here without you. And we love you guys. And thank you for all your support. And uh, yeah, I'd love to help you out with more stuff. So check out our channel because we have literally thousands of videos, not only math, but chemistry and physics as well. And we have a lot more coming. All right. Take care.